kisho mimi naenda kuweka sehi sheria ya housing kwa sababu hiyo housing tayari kuna vijana 1130 wanafanya kazi kwa program ya housing mpango yangu ni kwamba kufikia next year tutakuwa na vijana 1300 wanaofanya kazi katika program ya housing hapa Kilgoris program ya housing imeanza hapa Narok phase 1 tunataka kujenga nyumba 1500 All right, that's the president. Uh, he was speaking yesterday, and of course, uh, during the week, he has also been speaking about that he's going to be um, assenting to that bill that was um, approved by parliament, specifically the Senate last week. And of course, uh, we'll see the reintroduction of the housing um, levy, 1.5% per employee, much that the employer, but also Kenyans who are non salaried will also be required to. They pay 1.5% of their income. Fred, I begin with you on this one. On what your take is, it's just been about, is it two months or so yes. of disruption of uh, deductions? And I'll get into this point. Bearing in mind the sort of discussion that has gone on, even in Parliament and outside, mm. where shall we head here, from here? Thanks, Sam. Uh, if you remember, the reason why this bill went through all these amendments is because the court had declared it unconstitutional. It didn't have uh, a legal framework for collection of the funds. Uh, who are the who is the designate uh, <coughs> uh, collector? And uh, uh, there were an issue of uh, discrimination in the sense that uh, the court said uh, it was only targeting the salaried and. Uh, uh, th those amendments uh, were put in place and it, mm -hmm. it, it has been a discussion that uh, Kenyans have been very worried about. But with that as it may, today uh, both houses have passed it and this morning probably uh, President Ruto would be signing the bill into an act. Now, in the last uh, discussion in the Senate, you notice that uh, the Azimio La Moja One Kenya coalition uh, members of the Senate introduced some amendments that did not go through. For example, Okongo Mogeni was trying to look at how do we now uh, look at the issues of exempting some of the people who have got mortgage facilities from, from, from this, yeah, even though they are salaried. It has been a debate. However, they are going to have their way. But uh, the effects will be massive because it will be a deduction from your salary. And, and, and the employer also will remit the same. At a time when <coughs> uh, the economy is as not really stabilized, so I, I think uh, Kenyans will have to bear with it. They love to tighten their belts again, even though we said they have tightened it enough. Uh, we love to live with it. The, the, the majority have their way, and the minority have their say. So that's where we are today. We, there's nothing much we can do. It has been passed, and uh, let's see if true it is true that these. Uh, will help Kenyans get houses, as uh, the President Ruto is saying, if it is true that uh, the targets that they have put in place, uh, particularly from their manifesto and what they keep on saying will be achieved, then Kenyans will judge them on that. And if it doesn't work, then Kenyans also will judge them on that because it is from their performance that uh, the people of Kenya will decide, do you want to proceed with this? Is it hurting us? Is it helping us? I, th I think we have to, 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 to leave it at that point for now. Okay. Honorable College, so <coughs> what, what does this mean um, for the Kenya Kwanza plan? First of all, uh, as a country, you know, and uh, Kenya Kwanza, we are super excited. Having uh, the president invited the public this morning is, first of all, to sh assure that the president respects. Uh, uh, I the just judiciary. wanted to indicate that there are reports that that event has been postponed to tomorrow. No problem. But, but, but carry on. I'm sure there are, there, are, there are probably other issues that have probably come up in his calendar that <coughs> were and, and not, uh, had not been foreseen. Uh, mm -hmm. foreseen. But that is to say that uh, the president respects the judiciary and respects the rule of law. Like uh, <coughs> Wakili Fair did mention, there were areas that uh, the judiciary had pointed out that they were unconstitutional and not consistent with the law. And we have, as, as a parliament, we've made sure that all those areas have been addressed and the president was going to sign it. Sam, let me just give you a real 
uh, scenario without you know all this uh, fanfare of law and many other things on exactly what this is going to do. When I was in Kericho this Thursday and the president was launching the housing uh, project in Kericho, let me tell you, the number of young people that are going to be employed <coughs> is unprecedented. It is going to afford an opportunity. The spiral effect of this housing program is, is, is massive. It is huge. So many young people are going to get into employment. How many? So many women are going to get into employment. Like, you, like the president did say, and, and it is estimated that every single unit will employ uh, five people. So if the, like the, uh, being, it's being planned that the government is going to roll out about uh, uh, 20,000 units per year, that gives you almost... No, the promise was 250,000. 200, sorry, 200, 200 to 250,000 uh, units per year. That gives you about 1 million people uh, on employment. You've not talked <coughs> about, uh, you know... The, 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 what sort uh, of employment? All sorts of employment. Our young people are doing plumbing. The young people are doing uh, electrical works. The young people are Kazi Amkono. The people at our Kubeba Mawe. All these young people who have no opportunity to get into white collar job will now be observed by this housing unit. Look at what happened in so, Singapore so in 1999. Is as, sorry, if someone is, <coughs> is trained as a nurse or as a doctor or as a journalist. That's different. We are talking about so many other young people. Look, uh, Sam, and I'm trying to give you practical uh, examples. Well, I, I, I know. I'm my just, I'm constituency, just how I, my constituency, if you saw on Thursday, parents. the president was, was commissioning a technical training institute that is offering courses that include electric work, plumbing work, uh, and many other courses that are aligned to the people who did not succeed to go to university. Our young people who probably did not even uh, succeed to leave primary school to secondary school. In my constituency, that technical institute, we already have about 4,000 young people who are only going to be uh, trained on works, Kazi mm -hmm. You can imagine the ripple effect when these people now get employment in form of housing uh, development plan. That is a game changer. It is going to inject so much resource into our young people and make sure that there is going to be a lot of money in circulation in our country if all those units are going to come up. So like I'm saying, I have seen it firsthand. It, the ripple effect of this program is massive. And number two, uh, Sam, which is very important, it is that Kenya Kwanzaa administration is not a corn administration. We do not put manifesto out there just for the show. Our manifesto, <coughs> we have to leave our manifesto. We have literally demonstrated to the country that you can actually walk the talk in what you put out to the people. We campaigned on the platform of housing development, uh, um, uh, going to spur growth through housing. We campaigned on the platform of uh, universal health care. We campaigned on the platform of electrification of our people. Sam, uh, Fred here will tell you that uh, uh, most of their programs have just been, you know, and even many Kenyans, they have never believed that there's a government that can walk the talk. This administration <laughs> is trying to demonstrate <laughs> that we can do Let, that. Let's just In fact, the program. <laughs> off the show, I was, telling, I was telling Fred, what is the opposition there to do now? <laughs> you, you know, I, I don't know whether what you're saying is a fact or is a perception, um, but I respect your opinion. But if you say that 250,000 units will be built every year, um, it is a known fact that has not happened. It didn't happen in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, 2023 had just about four months, so let's not talk about that. How much is it going to cost to put up 250,000 units every year? If I go there, you know, processes of PPP are a bit lengthy processes. So sometimes it's not anticipated. Most of these houses are done on, on PPP uh, model. Number two is also, and, and that is why that saving was very important, because that is a saving that will be used now to guarantee the contractors to go on site. In an event, sorry, in an event sorry, where... Sorry, um, I'm a bit slow this morning. So PPP is going to be used. How much will it cost to put up 250,000 units? I, do, I don't have my figures right here. Uh, How I mean, much my will housing levy now raise? It was projected, I think it was projected that uh, it is going to be even wider. You remember that there, we are now going into even those who are not employed. 
that actually was the issue with the courts. The courts uh, had, 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 had an issue with that section, so that it that was raises, discriminatory that to only the okay. levy for those who are employed. Mm. So we are even casting the net wider to make sure that the pool is even bigger, to allow what? a robust, I don't know, that is why, that is the legal framework that now uh, the so, courts sorry, have to for. Uh, and I'm sorry if this is uncomfortable, but you passed a law that you don't know how much it's going to raise. The court has pronounced itself on different issues. We do not know the number of unemployed people. First of all, even those ones who are not employed, there's a way that you are going to levy them. There are people who are unemployed and who cannot be levied. And that, that, that uh, pr uh, prerogative was now given to the CS to make sure that they make proper legislation and to make uh, 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 regulations on how it is going now to levy on the other ones. They're not even, so they're you, not even for, estimates of what you're dealing with here. That is now what is going to happen. Those are policies that are now going to happen. Because, I mean, we just passed the bill. Then now we'll go to regulations to make sure uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, like uh, Fred was saying, you know, even the collection. The, the court had an issue with how are you going to collect this fund? Which okay. body was going to make sure that they, they collect this fund? So it is still uh, a big area. All we needed to do, first of all, is to allow the process to take off, okay. and then the regulations will happen. That is exactly what happened with the social uh, health care fund. You know, so it, should, all these once were this, once bills that have come out. Uh, send into law. Then now the ministry uh, develops uh, regulations, or now they are going so to implement when the program. Collection beginning. It should happen this month. It should happen by the end of this month. But there are no regulations. You know, the court did not, did not have a problem with it. No, no. It was just prescribing that these Whatever are the, the sections. Whatever the court didn't have a problem with is unconstitutional. So let's not talk about it here. Yeah. It is only the affordable housing bill 2023 that is going to Absolutely. the government to collect revenue. Yes. Uh, I mean, the levy. <laughs> yes. So you're saying that regulations will come. So will deductions for, begin immediately or they'll wait for the regulations? I, I believe, because those ones are already in employment, that had already been deducted, of course, you know, you can't but you defend that them. is discriminatory, that, 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 which is what... That's what I'm saying. And about. then now... So, sorry, Honorable Coach. <coughs> that is what the court was complaining about. Absolutely. So you go ahead and deduct those employed, yet you don't have a, a mechanism. But it is not discriminatory sorry. anymore. That's what I'm saying. It, it is going now. So you're saying yeah. that immediately it is assented to, by the president, yeah. deductions commence. Yes. But the national treasury is to come up with regulations to decide how the non-salary will be deducted. Meaning, there's a period of time, deduction will continue discriminatively on those salaried as you wait for the national treasury to come with, with, the, the, with the, regulations the regulations to deal with the non-salaried. Isn't that what you're saying? It is, but, uh, but it is not discriminatory because, again, you, you ca the national treasury, the CS national treasury, was given the prerogative to decide on those ones who are unemployed, on who should be t levied and who should not be levied. So that discretion, again, is, is, is an issue. And that is where the regulations come in. Honorable Coach, I'll come back for more. But uh, Honorable Ruku, talk to me about, would you have an idea of how much the government is hoping to collect <coughs> on this levy? Um, before you come to that, uh, I think uh, just speaking from what my brother is saying, or the question, uh, this um, piece of law is going also to amend other laws so that they can, uh, it can be properly aligned. And one of the law which is going to be amended is Tax Procedures Act of 2015 so that non-salaried uh, Kenyans <coughs> uh, can participate in this uh, housing uh, uh, fund. So um, the C is concerned, or the Capital and Secretary concerned, will come up with the regulations, the regulations which are going to uh, have an effect to Tax Procedures Act of 2015. Uh, that is what needs to be known out there. So passing this, uh, the President signing this piece of law today or tomorrow is not the end. It is the work which is beginning. The work of correcting taxes, but also uh, coming up with other amendments and regulations so that they can be properly aligned. Because for KRA to be able to uh, uh, get these uh, taxes, it can only get taxes if all the laws concerning the taxations are within, uh, are aligned properly. And one of the um, act which should be, which is going to be amended is um, Tax Procedures Act of 2015. So by passing it and the president signing it, 
it doesn't mean we have finished the work. So, so, so there's still me, more work to be done. Is that you telling me you don't know how much it's <coughs> going to collect? Some. Mm. Uh, how many people in the Republic of Kenya who are not, uh, who, who are not uh, employed? Do you know the exact number? If you wanted to know, you if we don't know the exact number, it right. means we'll not be able to know uh, oh, the oh, no, exact no. amount of money which this J just law. No, 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 no. Sam, <laughs> you don't want to hold. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to hold because <laughs> you are asking a very wrong question. <laughs> the wrong question you're asking is, uh -huh. do we, we know the number of <coughs> embroiled Kenyans, uh -huh. but we don't know the number of sure. unembroiled. Does the government know how many <coughs> Kenyans there are in this country? Yes. How many? We roughly say a few a few years we are saying 45. Now we are saying uh, uh, 50 million Kenyans. So, so assuming but <coughs> but assuming but but, million, but we can only ask uh, we can only ask Kenya Bureau of Standards yeah. uh, that question on the number of Kenyans we have at the moment. <coughs> yeah. Okay. And and, they're, and, they're and and they are from where I sit, from where I sit, some a building. They're just next to. From where I sit, treasury. from where I sit, some. Yeah. I don't know the number of Kenyans okay. who are an, unemployed. So, so and therefore, because I don't know the number of Kenyans who are unemployed, and all of them uh, uh, um, unemployed, mm. and also having an income. Mm. I mean, officially, uh, formerly an, uh, unemployed. I don't know whether you are getting that. So, when you're passing the budget and you're looking at the Finance Act, mm -hmm. you're actually able to look at the tax targets, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, in Parliament. You can actually estimate how much revenue you want to collect to finance the budget. The budget policy statement, we passed it uh, a few weeks ago in, uh -huh. uh, in Parliament. It yeah. comes up with uh, uh, the amount of um, budget estimate, <coughs> uh, which we are looking at for the Republic of Kenya, and also the deficit thereof, the different sectors on how uh, it will uh, be uh, budgeted for in each and every uh, sector, and how we will be raising that uh, uh, money through what we call finance bill. And by the way, the opposition was, or the minority, were in support of the budget policy statement, mm -hmm. and we were saying we expect that them is, to... That is, to, that is to not where I'm leading you to. Uh, mm -hmm. The question I'm asking is, so when you're planning the budget, you can actually tell how much revenue you're going to collect or you're planning, you're targeting to collect, isn't it? Yes. That's why KRA uh, works with a target. And they can tell, we're targeting this from VAT, we're targeting this from imports, we're targeting this from income tax. So and it's they, and, and, and in most cases, they, they miss the target. Companies. And in most cases, they miss yes, the they target. Do. Why and do they miss the target in most is, cases? Please, uh, Honorable um, Ruku. What I'm saying is, <coughs> there is the planning aspect of the government, yes. the, of the Minister of uh, National Treasury and Planning. So they can tell where the resources are, are going to come from. The figures that we have from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, statistics indicate that at about 3.1, 3.2 million Kenyans are in formal employment. 15 million are in informal employment. And the rate of unemployment is known. That is why the government is actually coming up with an affordable housing program to deal with the unemployment question. Yep. So why is it so difficult for Parliament when you're passing these laws, you actually get presentations from the relevant authorities to tell you that this is how much you are targeting to collect? Some, the question you're asking is not valid because uh -huh. uh, all those who are in formal employment, mm. they have uh, different levels of income. Yeah. Different levels of income will be uh, uh, taxed uh, differently. So unless we know with precision how much every uh, informally employed person earns at the end of every month, then we can be able to calculate with precision, so we can, can be able to calculate with precision how much we'll be able to raise. Let's wait and see and then the regulations then it from, the, from the, there. let's no. wait and wait, let's wait and see the, re the regulation from the cabinet secretary. S sorry, then th there, it means there's a problem there because you're getting into a program yes. to build 250,000 uh, houses every year. You don't know the cost, you don't know the financing, and you want a levy that you don't know how much it's going to raise. How then can you achieve that? Um, some, the, when it comes to the amount of money to be raised from former uh, abroad uh, Kenyans, which is 1.5%, that is very easy to know the amount. But the courts have moved forward and said, every Kenyan should be able to participate in this program. Okay. And, and uh, uh, those who are not formally abroad, they earn an income every month. This 
and this income is different from one person to the other. And they will be levied according to their income. Okay. Income, who will be able to give us this information? Is KRA because of the, uh, of the tax returns. Every Kenyan uh, da does submit his tax or a tax and returns. So far, and from the tax returns, and from the tax returns, we'll be able to know. So let me give you the, much, let me give you the figure. To raise. The figure, before you go to yeah. uh, uh, Fred, yes, yes. the figure is 80 billion per, 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 per month. 80 billion per month? Yes. So in a year? You times by 12. What do you mean, Sam? <laughs> Stop being lazy. Sorry. Oh. I was hoping in, fact, <laughs> in fact, we are projecting okay. that we are going to collect 108 billion per month. Okay, so if you collect 80 billion, that's 960 billion shillings in a year. Yes. That's what you're hoping to collect? That is, of course. How? From where? From both employed and unemployed. I'm telling you right mm -hmm. now, the figures that are existing is 80 billion. You know. You can count a check. Um, when the Finance Act 2023 was passed, mm -hmm. the figure from housing levy was about 60 billion shillings. Yeah, and in a doing, year. Yeah. In a month, I'm telling you, in a month. It's not in a month, it was in a year. Okay, as we continue the show, I'll confirm to you that that is actually the figure. In okay. fact, we are projecting that we collect 108 billion. That is why it is trans transformative. I mean, honestly, Sam, uh, if, 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 if we were, it's only that this court ruling came in at the wrong time. If we were, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> because <laughs> we had gained momentum, <laughs> we had gained momentum, <laughs> we are starting construction, young people were excited. Have you even seen young people coming out to demonstrate? Even without going to the figures, the, first of all, you must admit that this program is a very good program for our country. Before going down to the numbers, it's a very good program for our country. Those other numbers are purely for administrative purposes. But is it good? Yes. Is it going to transform the young people of this country? Yes. Is it going to uh, align with the manifesto of Kenya Kwanzaa? Yes. Is it going to employ Mamamboga? Yes. Are people going to get affordable housing? Yes. And you know, many naysayers mm. actually have a problem with our transformation in this country, not only in housing, <laughs> but even many other sectors. I was looking at Singapore and how the decision was made to make sure that Singapore are able to succeed in their housing program. In 1959, Singapore was, was, was a junk of, was a whole forest of all these uh, slums and, 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 and poor housing programs. In 1960, when they started the program of housing their nation, things changed. And that is why even foreign direct investment became uh, something huge in Singapore. Because already as a country, they had a plan of saving. Investors had reason to go and invest in that country. Why is Kenya already getting a lot of confidence from uh, investors? Why even are we getting people who are already to bid for their PPP program to make sure the housing <coughs> program is developed in the country? It is because okay. it has been demonstrated by the president that even that saving culture alone is enough. All right, you are clarifying about a figure yeah. and uh, you're saying that um, 960 billion shillings will be collected from the housing levy yes. every year. Yes. Um, the Kenya Revenue Authority has a target of 1.36 trillion shillings from income tax for the year, that is from salaries mm -hmm. and profits from the companies, a target of 1.36. We, ca we can dispute the figures, but that-, no, no, that no, no. I'm not disputing, I'm just telling you. Okay. The target is just about one trillion shillings. <laughs> and you know the calculation of uh, income tax, how it is? The maximum is 30% for companies, 35% for employees. So we, we can talk about that because housing levy is just 1.5%. Uh, but um, Fred, you wanted to say something about yes, yes. Uh, the future of this program. Y y you know, Sam, the questions you have raised, they are very valid. And you realize that that's why public participation is important. Because some of the questions you are raising would have actually been addressed in the public participation. I hope, Sam, we are not going to see a situation we saw in Kandara and uh, Gatanga when uh, the issues of items uh, uh, and when, when now the implementation stage started and the Kenyans were realizing that no, this is not what we signed up for. And the members of parliament were there. In this instance, the question that I've always raised, and I raised this on this show sometimes back, that, well, the court said that it, there is, where is the, um, the fair burden of uh, sharing the tax? And 
they went ahead and amended the bill and said, now we are going also to impose the levy on the people in the informal sector. The question we have been raising, and I'm sure that question we have also been struggling with some, how is the government going to collect that money from the people in the informal sector? How many are they? How is that targeting going to help them achieve the 250,000 units? In their manifesto, uh, Kenya Kwanza said that the deficit is around 200,000. And they said annually Kenya produce units, I think 50,000 units. Mm -hmm. So they were working towards that. <clears throat> but when you ask Honorable Ruku, Ruku says that, you know, the KRA can help them identify these people. You reckon that KRA doesn't seem to be aware. It means what the executive is doing and what these other agencies are doing are totally different. The only people that can bring them together is parliament through public participation when they are in, uh, legislating. But that has not happened. And that's why I said, for us in Azimio, they have had their way. We want to see how are they going to implement this program seamlessly. Because there is going to be future scrutiny on the implementation. If there are no regulations, the bill is there, no regulations, how are you going to implement it? Some you have seen the issue of regulation on some of these programs. Look at the SHIF. You saw the regulation issue. Look at the, the other programs, the regulation issues, all about regulation. So we want to ask them, even as the president intend to sign this, parliament, and particularly the, uh, the promoters or the, 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 the supporters of this bill, ensure that Kenyans do not suffer the same fate that they suffered in other bills where the regulations are not there, and then once the law is enacted, then the implementation problem, people start running helter skelter that this is hurting them. I agree, Honorable Koech, we all need houses. I agree there's a deficit, but how do we make it useful and seamless to the people of Kenya? So, what do you think should happen? Um, because they are saying that it is the regulations that are going to guide on how non-salaried Kenyans mm -hmm. are going to be deducted. Mm -hmm. Some, if that did not come at the point of public participation, and I'm sure it must have come. It did. I'm sure it must have come. But how it was never captured is what I'm worried. Because you see, we are worried that uh, you have a huge target to implement this. Is it progressive? Are you saying that in a year you shall have achieved the 250? Some says no, going by history. And even when it was possible, it was not possible. Today, these people are going to contribute. Remember at a time when the economy is melting, when the resources are limited, when people do not have that money. So is it really possible to achieve such target when people can hardly survive? That is my worry. So I think they need to make it progressive. Maybe they need to lower their targets. If instead of 250, lower it and make it progressive so that with the time we, we see, achieve see, that. The essence of that question is, um, because the court said yes. it is discriminatory. Yes. Um, because first of all, even the beneficiaries yes. uh, were different. It was possible that someone is contributing, but they'll never get a house. I see that uh, what has been passed is that, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Honorable Ruku and Honorable Koech, that um, for you to benefit, you must have contributed to the housing levy. Yes. Um, but then some of these contributors are people who own houses. Some of them are people that have mortgages. mortgages. So how do you roll it out in a manner that is not discriminatory? It is going to be very challenging. The issues of discrimination will not have been cured in that sense because there are people who will still feel I am not able to. Why would I contribute to a scheme that I'm not able to? And again, some, something we're also forgetting. I don't know whether they captured the issue of the penalty for failure to, 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 to remit the 3%. People will still feel like this thing is hurting. So I, I, I'm really struggling to understand, while this is going to be signed into an act of parliament, how are we really going to achieve? Because President Ruto's uh, plan is to achieve what is in manifesto. His manifesto says there's a deficit of 200,000 units per year. He wants to achieve that. He promised the people of Kenya. They have divided the, uh, the, the houses into social housing for those who earn, I think, uh, 20,000, between yeah. 20,000 and 29. Yeah. Then there's affordable 149, 20 to 149, and, and the rest. But the majority, some that 
we are looking at. The people that we call hustlers, they are falling under the social housing program. These are the same people that are falling under some the informal employment. Mm. These are the people we are going to target with the 1.5. Who again is multiplying theirs? Because the salaried, uh, like some here, 1.5, employer 1.5. The hustler Mkokoteni is 1.5 that he must remit on the ninth day at the end of the month. If he fails to get it and he is penalized 3% in the next deduction, what happens? It appears that that program might fail. Okay. And that's why I'm asking, mm. President Ruto should consider progressive implementation. Once the regulations are in place, and lower your targets and ensure progressive implementation so that you don't hurt people so much as we grow the economy together. Sam, oh, oh, all right. Let's um, take on. Uh, yes, and I want us to exit from this conversation. Um, what is it? Yeah, that uh, the courts mm -hmm. um, existed. I mean, the, the big question in the court was that the levy was uh, discriminatory. And, w and was to be levied only to the salaried person. Right. Um, so the bill has cured uh, that uh, matter by... Bringing the informal. Yes, by ensuring that uh, uh, even um, the gross income of a person in the informal uh, sector mm. uh, is subjected to the levy. However, uh -huh. the bill is silent on the mode of correction mm -hmm. of the rata. Of the, uh, of the informal. Of that's, the informal. What I, that's what I was asking. Yes, it is. the country wait it until... Is, it, is, it, is, it is silent, uh, and that's why there's a proposal uh, to introduce an amendment to allow the provision of the Tax Act of 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, so once the bill is signed, there is further uh, amendment which will be done in our laws. To say what? Uh, so that now those in informal sector... Uh, can come up with, I mean, uh, they can be subjected to the levy in a procedural manner. So is because at the moment there is, a, there is so, so things so are a bit is unclear. There, is there any proposal on what that will look yes. like? Yes, no, no, no. Uh. The committee has introduced an amendment to allow the provision of tax procedure act of 2015. Okay. So that, that's what I'm asking. Should the country wait until that, that amendment has been put in place? Yes. Before deductions? No, no, no. Mm. That is the reduction of the uh, informal uh, sector. The formal sector is, is I, very I, clear. I think something is the getting, formal sector is very clear. Something is getting lost. What is not clear so is look, the informal sector. Between July and I think January of this year, there were deductions from salary Kenyans. Yes. Yes. All of us who are salaried. Yes, that was discriminatory. Even as the members of parliament included. Yeah, <laughs> your salary. So <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it, it's good to, to so, so because, because okay, most fine, <laughs> including. Honaburuku. <laughs> it was going on. Right? Say that, including members of parliament. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> really now? Yeah, we have been taxed. Now, it's okay. it, when this bill is signed into law, and I don't know that it becomes effective, it should be starting maybe 1st of April, if I'm not mistaken. So you're going to deduct a housing levy on Honaburuku and fellow members of parliament and some. at the end of April without the non salaried. Isn't that the same thing? That was happening between July and exactly. January. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why court it declared it unconstitutional. It, it, uh, the, the, the provision for the non yeah. uh, is work in progress. And I'm sure we'll move with speed okay. to get the regulation done so that it can be clear how it's going to be implemented. Sam, just a correction. Work in progress, you say, yes. Just a correction. Um, it is 80 billion yearly, 6.5 billion monthly. Sorry for. for <laughs> For, for, for misleading the, the nation. The, the nation. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually 80 billion. It's actually 80 billion yearly uh, and, uh, and, 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 and 6.5 <laughs> billion monthly. My apologies. It's okay. Okay. All right. Honorable Coach, 80 billion um, per year, not per month. But how did they arrive at that? That's what we were collecting from, from, from those who are employed. So from the unemployed, what is the target? That's what I'm saying. I mean, you're coming back to the same question that Ruku was trying to, <laughs> to respond to. I think, that is, I no, think no. We, we've addressed that issue. Okay, if we don't have uh, the case, if yeah, it's okay to say you don't have address that issue. issue. Well, because initially, uh, adequately. initially the figure was about 60 or so, I think it was 63 billion Point shillings, billion, yeah. um, the target from employed. If it's extended to unemployed and you're saying it's going to be 80 billion shillings, that's what I was asking how that is being arrived at. Because you have to know 
how many people you're targeting and what the levels of income are. I want us to listen to something that has been happening over the past few days, different parts of the country, but specifically these ones from the Rift Valley. <laughs> Mimi nataka niwaambie hivi. Mambo hii kulete mambo hii kwa mkutano mimi sitaki. Wase bidu? Mm. Ogaso. You people from Rift Valley, I want to appeal to you, don't take the presidency for granted. Mimi naona mnaanza kuchezea hii kiti yenu. Namusichezea kama rais amekuja kwa county nyumbani na ni rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya amekuja kuzidua mipango ya maendeleo kupanga maendeleo muda toa rais kwa mamlaka yake na cheo chake kazi yake ni kuzuia vita wewe hapana vita kelele ni wewe nyamaza mnaulizana nini sasa hiyo kazi gani tunafanya sasa mkilete si adhabuni ya ugomvi na kupigania viti uchaguzi uko mbali wewe unakomboa vijana kupiga kelele. Mwingine anakifua vijana kupiga kelele. Rais amekaa pale. Ile ilimulete haongei. Mkutano wewe siendelea. I'm going to call our leaders from this area. From our counties here in North and South Rift. We get it in the hour. So that they can explain to me what is the problem. And why they want to embarrass our president at home. Deputy President there. Uh, speaking to leaders in the Rift Valley and said he's calling to call them for a, he's going to call them for a meeting. What, about, what is going on in your in your region and wh why? I don't know that it's early or why now. We must condemn such acts of uh, incidences, especially where the president is present and uh, all this fighting in the strongest terms possible. It is foolish. It is unaccepted. It is uncultured. It's uncivilized, and it is wrong. Totally wrong. For, for people to, to, to heckle uh, when the president is there. Uh, there are so many things, uh, Sam, that are playing out, particularly in our region. Number one is there are politicians who are generally unpopular. The population, they don't do anything. And the population have a problem with them. They just wait when the president is coming to a backyard. They mobilize young people. They want to ride on the programs of that the president is bringing as their own programs. And that in the process becomes the issue. Because if someone is going to mobilize against me, for instance, then of course I also have to mobilize. In the process, we have two teams, or even three or four, that are at war even before the meeting starts. That is where the problem starts. Number two is that if any leader is unpopular, there is absolutely no reason to mobilize people to attend a function just so that they can cheer you in that function. Because that also comes with trying to show the president that I'm still popular when, in real sense, it is just uh, 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 um, you are not popular. Finally, and which is uh, the most important one, is that there are politicians from within our region who feel that uh, the president has a space of uh, 10 years. And slowly, they are starting to initiate processes of trying to say, you know, we also want to be part of the succession politics in their mind. I mean, they are talking about, and you've heard the deputy president speak about it so many times. There are, guy, there are people there, people who just want to start stories. You've even heard the president jokingly mention about some who want to be kings or queens in different areas of our, of our, of our backyard. Mm. It is an unnecessary. Those are the things that are hyping the crowd unnecessarily. People are saying, you know, I want to be the Kipsugi's kingpin. Another one is saying, I want to be the Nandi kingpin or some kingpin, I don't know from people which area. That. So that people start uh, to start politics and projecting themselves for elections of 2032. Honestly, and total waste of time. 
I really want to use this to rally and call on my people that it is unnecessary. Let us focus on delivering for our people. Let us initiate programs that will help our people. Like what the president say, it should be, there's no election that is going to happen between now and 2027. All we need to be doing now is to tell the people what are the projects that we have for them. You know, we have so many projects that we can roll out for the people. We have fertilizer to give to our people so that they can improve on their crops. We want to improve on our dairy. We want to improve on our roads. We want to uh, roll out connectivity over electricity. We want to make sure that uh, pe our people have water. We want to make sure that our people have proper infrastructure from all spheres. Mm. And all these other politics of one day is totally unnecessary. The president, however, gave a serious warning that if he's going to visit the region again, and there are going to be politicians who are going to uh, be uh, purchasing goons to disrupt his function, that any of that politician who is going to be mentioned will not be allowed to contest in our party. As, that is as, as clear as it is. So that akuna kujipangia tena. People should be, popularity should be natural. And it is also an opportunity to ask all those leaders who are not performing to perform. You cannot just wait when the president is coming, then you start hiring people to come and, uh, and, 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 and shout. Totally disrupting a program. The president has to spend almost 10 minutes trying to calm crowds of people who have just mobilized for each other. It is totally unnecessary and uncalled for. I hear you. Um, and there are a lot of questions that come up after that. But uh, you said that these unpopular leaders were trying to get at each other. Yeah, you see, Who? Because, when... Because when the heckling has been particularly so for governors of Kericho and Bumet. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if it, it does not matter who is popular or who is unpopular at that point. I'm saying, generally, there are people who just wait for the president to come. They are hardly participating in projects before the president comes. And now, if the president tells you Ooh, MPs, that I will be, whether MPs or, or, or senators or, or governors, I don't want to point names on anyone. I'm saying this thing is not, cannot be one individual. It has to be a planned thing. You know, by the time people get a crowd, get and stand somewhere, and you could tell, and the president could tell. You know, when you're on top of the vehicle, you can actually see, you find a group of 20 young men there, you know, uh, hardly incoherent, can't listen to the talk. You can tell this is a hired crowd. But then there is that crowd that is, you know, that is uh, uh, organic, a crowd that just, uh, so, so you know, let, let, disapproves. Let, let's be particular here. So. In one of those instances, it is Governor Eric Mutai uh, addressing the crowd, and he's heckled down. So who is this heckling him down? It is wrong. I mean, it is a group, uh, for, 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 for that Kapsusa area, I do not want to necessarily point out on my governor, but there was a general uh, disapproval of, 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 of what was happening. There was, there was, there was a lot of tension uh, in both stations. And sometimes it's, when it's just local politics. You're confusing me uh, because you said these unpopular leaders were mobilizing. I said it is, it is, it is, it is a precursor of so many things. <clears throat> Number one, it is individuals sometimes who are unpopular. And when the president is coming, they decide, no, we must demonstrate to the president that we are still popular. So they ferry young people. And those ferried young people are given instructions that if so-and-so is going to speak, then you make sure that. I outshine so him. So did Governor Mutai mobilize people to heckle him? No, no, no. I'm saying I'm not giving a specific case. I'm giving a general overview of what I saw in Bomet and Kericho, that those could be the reasons why all those things are happening. Of course, no one exactly knows what really happened at that point. <laughs> and that is why even the deputy president he said he's going to call for a meeting to understand what is happening. But I have said, number one, it is early campaigns by politicians. <laughs> there are politicians who already, so, and you know, our region is becoming a, extremely competitive, that immediately you are elected, people are starting to plan for the next general election. You know what I'm going to yeah. it, it is okay, but um, you are very eloquent on what exactly is the problem. Yes. But on the specifics, you don't do. Because I don't want to focus on individuals. About I, I've condemned, I have condemned the okay. acts of, 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 of right. hooliganism and, and I'll bullying. I'll that as your response. That, that happened, yeah. Fred, I do not. Fred, what does this mean when it's happening in the presence of the president? Sam, President William Ruto is the party leader of UDA. That area predominantly voted for the UDA and for president. By the virtue that he is a president, he has got access to intelligence reports 
And I know, if for sure what Honorable Kwechi is saying is true, that there are people who are planning against the other, the president should know that firsthand. And he should have mentioned it and called those people out on that same podium and told them, you, you, and you, you were mobilizing young people to come and cause chaos in the public baraza. That did not happen. But remember these chaos also, we witnessed them in Embu, mm. where people were being heckled. Embu? Yes. Oh. It was no, in no, Meru. Meru, sorry. Yeah. Not Embu. Meru, sorry about that. <laughs> in Meru, where people were being, or, 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 or being heckled. Now, in my view, it is about service delivery to the people. Yes. When a leader is elected, and this, maybe to protect uh, Honorable Kwech, me, I'll say this because this is the truth. I think the leaders that were elected, the public feel they have not lived to what they promised. Exactly. And therefore, it is time to show the president that these people you gave us as our party leader through the party ticket, these are people that we don't want to see. And in the coming election, we shall kick them out. But remember, by extension, they're also saying that the regime is not doing anything about it. So there's a message they are sending to President Ruto. At the same time, there's a message they are sending to the local leaders. Now, if it is true, Horebu Koech, that it is a fight of supremacy battles among the local leaders, then again it is important that the local leaders sit down and agree on issues. I saw the uh, governor of uh, Bomet mm -hmm. struggling. And around him, for sure, there were a group of people around him. When he was speaking, they were cheering. But when the other person was speaking from the other side, he was being booed. So it is true that there could be supremacy battles within. But how do you ensure that the supremacy battles are, uh, are finished? If you are elected as a governor, as a senator, as an area member of parliament, deliver to the people. When the excited crowd know that you are delivering, when those hustlers believe that you have lived to the promise and you're delivering. There'll be no heckling. In fact, they'll be telling the president that here we have a governor who is working, we have a member of parliament who is working, and we love them, and we'd want to support them more. But here they are showing disapproval. They're telling the president, mm -hmm. we have a governor who is not working. We have a senator who is not working, for example. So I think President Ruto knows who are these, what they are doing, who is faring, if at all there is faring, and they must sit down. When Rigiji says, that is the one going to sit down with the leaders from Rift Valley and address the issue while the president himself comes from that region and understands the politics there better than Rigiji, then I think it is better that Rigiji and the president meet them together to address that issue. But finally, there's also the issue of uh, 2027. Right. You do realize, Sam, that uh, it is likely that... Uh, the locals feel that uh, my payment your best. How about they start looking at the alternatives? Because they, what they were given, mm. I, I'm not sure how the, uh, the governor of uh, Bomet and the governor of Kericho got their ticket. Was it competitive? Was it a uh, direct ticket? If it was competitive, it then, competitive. If it was competitive yeah. Yeah. then it is true that now people feel there's something they're not doing right. And they have an opportunity to correct that. Okay. They have opportunity. O all right. Um, Honorable Ruko, let's finish up with you because it has also happened in some parts of Mount Kenya. I think there was a bit of that in Kembu and as you rightly say in Meru. Um, so when you see such kind of things, because th these are members of the public, whether mobilized or not, they are the ones that are expressing themselves. What, what is this symptomatic to? It is a purely banned political manners where politicians with different camps, camp A and camp B, they mobilize that I want uh, to be seen as the most uh, uh, popular, serious politician in that particular function. Then uh, I have a political opponent also who want to ensure uh, it also uh, seems the same. So I think it's just um, bad political manners. We should be condemned. Mm. We should not be able to do that in a presidential function. President is coming uh, to outrun what his government is doing in that region. For instance, for if it is Mount Kenya region, president is not coming to to see who is more popular than the other. About the issue of uh, political strength on the ground, yeah. we can leave it to. <coughs> Uh, we do it at different functions, not uh, presidential functions. And uh, I agree with the uh, prescription by the president. And actually, it should be more tougher than that. 
um, that in case I mobilize for echoing of another politician in the presence of the president, uh, I should not be even around to gain anything, any, pol any, any project, mm. uh, government, national government project, should not come to my area. If, if, if I have that kind of behavior, it's completely but, but bad. It is something we should not happen. But your problem should not be the problem of your constituents. Yes. Uh, you, know, you know, here it's not about the problem of the people. No, you're saying... It's, it's not about... It's not about... If you mobilize to heckle... Yes. You, no development project should come to your constituency. Actually, it's not about the development project. The people are innocent. The people are completely innocent here. It is, so what are you it, is, it is me as a politician deciding to go and buy beer and, I don't know, give some money uh, to a group of young people to tell them, what, once so-and-so starts uh, speaking, mm. all of you should you start uh, shouting. All right, That is exactly what happened in, oh, oh, right, in, right. uh, in Meru. All right, Honorable. That's what happened in, in, uh, in Gyambu. Let's take a look at the feedback that has come to us at Citizen TV Kenya Sam Gituku. The hashtag to use is a dead break on what Kenyans have to say about the three topics of the morning. Babu Michael, you're saying that even if the housing levy is signed into law, there are very many questions without answers about the uh, public private partnership kind of project. What are the exact amounts for construction of the house? Who is the custodian of the deducted funds? How safe are the funds? Um, how do I read your name? That one. Singapore is a country smaller than Nairobi City County and way smaller than Bomet County. How do <laughs> Kenya Kwanzaa <laughs> MPs keep drawing comparison between Singapore and Kenya in terms of the housing program, viewing things from the wrong end of the telescope? Dombori, the panelists disjointed answering reflects a glaring lack of understanding regarding the housing levy, highlighting the need for comprehensive education and informed discourse on housing program. Remy Butia, the affordable housing bills passage marks a crucial step in President Ruto's policy direction, potentially transforming Kenya's housing sector. As this legislative chapter closes, the real work begins. Implementation. Sawe, corruption in Kenya is deeply ingrained to the extent that elected leaders often secure their positions through buying votes. We can't rely on them to enact meaningful anti-corruption laws. Those involved should be barred from holding public office forever. Those are the views uh, from Kenyans this morning. I have to thank you, Honorable Nelson Koech, um, Fred Okango, and Honorable Geoffrey Ruku for making time for us this morning. Thank you. To have this conversation. This has been a dead break, and it continues after the break on matters uh, Sporty Monday. They'll be here to talk about the latest action and what you should be thinking about in the new week. Stay tuned. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.